يلا سكند شيء بس أي أورلي إنفورم هو في هذا الأسبوع ذا البيئة تيست أنا بريبير أوليا إني بوتر أيضا بريبريشن أرمي كليا but you will be able to manage both the chapters then adla vandu 50% tha varum you will be able to manage manage pani idvendra appo paper tough as it pannalam mudana yeah موسيقى Yeah, you can with uh, this thing paper discussion you can have a look at yeah, right. mr Munir. So we'll do. I hope those who are online, you are able to see the screen, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Like I mentioned, keep your videos on. I may be calling out your names. So listen. The second chapter is over, right? Like we have discussed the theory part. Thing is, uh, see, maybe I'll help you with few more problems. I'm not going to start any new chapter before your holidays. So I want you to completely focus on those two chapters. And when you're coming back, I want you all to perform well. Those who have got less marks in the first test, ensure you're making all the corrections that are needed and do it well. Okay. So I'll be discussing this paper. There's the first test paper. 
and tomorrow and day after tomorrow there may be few problems from the next chapter we'll solve okay so the main objective of uh, solving this paper is it's not about finding only the correct answer we will also try to understand why the other answers are wrong we are going to use our brain like that today okay so having said this we'll start with the first question when a negatively charged conductor is connected to earth so what do you have you have a conductor which is negatively charged and you connect it to earth what is the right option electrons flow from the earth to the conductor no charge flow occurs flow, protons flow from the conductor to the earth electrons flow from the conductor to the earth which is the right option so d is right but let's try to understand why a is not right why is a wrong so if you look at the statement no let's understand everything electrons flow from the earth to the conductor already the conductor that you are using is what kind of charge is having what kind it's negative had the electrons flown from the earth to the conductor what would have happened to the conductor it would have got even more negatively charged the basic purpose of you grounding something is to make the excess charge flow to the ground right when that is a scenario if electrons flow from the earth to the conductor it will get even more negatively charged that is wrong what about this no charge flow occurs that will happen only if you connect a neutral conductor but why are you going to connect a neutral conductor to earth so next protons flow from the conductor to the earth so protons cannot come out of the conductor because they are inside the nucleus so this is also not possible so what is the right option electrons flow from the conductor to the earth so that it becomes neutral did you understand the logic yes was it online did you understand the logic yes yes sir yes okay second an electric dipole placed in non uniform electric field experiences both torque and net force this is the right answer okay accepted but let's see why the other answers are not right had they mentioned no torque and no net force then how is the dipole placed in the electric field when can this situation occur see suppose in your exam it is not necessary that they are going to give the same question if at all they give you a question for which this option is right b option is right then how is the question supposed to be when will the system not experience any torque and not experience any force see this kind of a situation where it experiences no torque and no force is called as equilibrium about equilibrium did you learn it in the second chapter i asked you to write it down i you guys wrote the notes from the recorded videos only no there i explained about one concept no stable and unstable equilibrium go to the concept of electrostatic potential energy of a dipole placed in external electric field check your notes check your notes go to the concept of potential energy of a dipole in external electric field i would have derived it minus pe you have that so you have minus pe cos theta under that did i explain the concept of stable and unstable equilibrium right so i would have told you what is the meaning of stable and unstable equilibrium what is it so when will stable equilibrium mathematically occur when the value of theta is zero similarly when will unstable equilibrium attain 180 so what is the meaning of equilibrium when no net torque or no net force is acting on the system so for this kind of a thing to happen then the question should have been something like this in a uniform electric field the dipole should have been placed with a positive charge here negative charge here or negative charge here positive charge here because this situation describes only equilibrium it is not speaking about stable or unstable equilibrium i'm stressing on this point again and again you will get a question for sure based on that concept of stable or unstable equilibrium it is very 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 important all that you have to know is 
for stable equilibrium the angle between the dipole moment and electric field should be zero and for the unstable it should be 180 degrees and remember the condition under which it is derived when a dipole is placed in uniform electric field so that is why i drew uniform electric field and i drew the positive and the negative charge guys those who are online i hope you are making notes of this because in your second chapter test i might put this kind of a question also at the time don't struggle Okay, don't get confused. You might get this. Am I clear with this? Right? <clears throat> what about C? When will there be a situation of a dipole based in external electric field experiencing only four but no torque? Never. Okay. When will there be a situation there will be only torque but no net force? So had the question been placed in uniform electric field. So this happens when the dipole is placed in uniform electric field. Am I clear with this? Guys, are you able to understand? And I'm repeating it again. I think I've already told this. This year, how much? What is the percentage of uh, them testing with these kind of questions? So 50% of your paper is going to be like this. That is why I'm telling, study. I'll give you more videos where I want to concentrate more of problems in the class and you have to work on the pre-recorded content and come to the class. Only if you both, if you both are going to work together, I can solve something like this. Well, then at the end of the day, you will feel like I've solved this problem. Paper will be horrible. Especially physics paper, you go to any news and see any year, 95% of the students will say, even if the paper is easy, it was tough because they don't understand the concept itself. Question is, Priya, sorry. There are, you know, you know, Brahmastra people are there. In the chapter, in the area. Don't put yourself in that kind of a state. Yeah. You guys can easily do it. We are in the starting of the year. And I'm therapy stress pandra. Why I'm doing this? I've not got into that. Though I've been telling it multiple times, I've not started emphasizing more on the pre-recorded content. That is more important. So you guys understand the importance of it. There were two, three classes. Some of you have not written and come. Correct. If you have not written it and you have written it only for the sake of just entering the class, don't do that. What is doing? Breathe up. Yes. So the dielectric constant K of an insulator can be. What is it? It can be 5 because what a dielectric constant is. Epsilon divided by epsilon naught. It is basically the ratio of the permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of free space. So permittivity of a medium is always greater than the permittivity of free space. Okay, permittivity of medium is always greater than permittivity of free space. So numerator is greater than the denominator. Value of K will always be greater than one. Look at the options. So that is the only option. So five is the only option which is greater than. Am I clear? Next. Two infinite plane parallel non conducting sheets separated by distance D have equal and opposite charges of density sigma. Electric field intensity at a point between the sheets. Is. So if I take the sheets to be like this, this is sigma, this is minus sigma. So they are asking what is the value of electric field between the sheets? What is the answer? So option should be D. Right. But why are the other options wrong? Let's see. Depends upon the location of the point. Is it right for an infinite? So if you take an infinite plane sheet, for an infinite plane sheet, is the value of electric field dependent on the distance? Is it dependent? How will the graph be?
how the graph be give me a straight line parallel to x axis what is the meaning of this electric field is uniform due to an infinite plane sheet see there is a concept of finite also but that's not a part of your syllabus cbs syllabus it's there for competitive exams so here you are able to understand right now this option itself is wrong it does not depend on the location because it's always uniform second one they told it is sigma by 2 epsilon not but sigma by 2 epsilon not is possible only for only due to one side of the sheet so due to the positive sheet it is going to be sigma by 2 epsilon not due to the negative sheet also it will be sigma by 2 epsilon not and both will be in the same direction opposite pair same because due to positive charge the electric field is away due to the negative charge it is towards so they both will be in same direction that is why they get added to give you a value of sigma by epsilon not so sigma by 2 epsilon not would have been right answer had they mentioned due to single sheet so here this would have been the answer had they mentioned it as single sheet correct what about zero the answer would have been zero had they mentioned as a regions outside the conductor you remember we did a problem based on this from your from our textbook so if i take this to be region 1 and this to be region 3 and if i take this to be region 2 in region 1 and region 3 the electric field is zero because the electric field due to listen to this the electric field due to the positive charge is to the left guys those who are online are able to understand sir yeah yes, sir so if there is any dot uh, please stop me okay so there is an electric field due to the positive charge is to the left electric field due to the negative charge is to the right and fortunately they both are of the same magnitudes hence they get cancelled so that's the case for the left hand side so what can happen is if this question is asked in assertion reason suppose i am framing a paper i can put a question like this i'll make the statement like this due to an infinite plane due to a system of infinite plane sheets which have positive and negative charge of equal magnitude electric field on the left of the plates is zero okay that will be the statement i'll give you the reason i'll give you is electric field due to the positive plate is to the left electric field due to the negative plate plate is to the right is that right listen to my reason carefully electric field due to the positive plate is to the right electric field due to the negative plate is to the left so i can confuse you there that is the place where most of them get confused okay assertion you will understand reason i'll give you right answer but you'll not be able to link whether they both are actually speaking about the same context or okay so i'm just giving you a perspective of how the questions can be framed right so zero i hope you understood where will it be it be in regions 1 and 3 basically it is outside the plates of the capacitor between it is sigma by epsilon not due to what reason suppose this is put as a statement assertion it's right what is the reason for it electric field due to the positive plate is sigma by 2 epsilon not to the right electric field due to the negative plate is 2 epsilon not to the right provided they had given this kind of a diagram they can change there also what if the diagram was like this i sort of read them so you, there are multiple things you need to focus on be clear i sort of read that santosh so have they given it like this what would have happened to my reason it should have been to the left and the left so it is very important So zero is wrong because of that reason. So sigma by epsilon not is right. And where did we use this concept in second chapter? Where did we use it in the second chapter? One of the most important concepts used in the parallel plate capacitors. That is why we derive capacitance. No sigma by epsilon not in both. Then we derive. So sigma you write it as Q into A. Now work out sigma you write it as Q into A. E is equal to V D input V by D input to we start deriving. Remember, so you need to connect these two chapters and study properly. 
चलिए प्रोसीड so if the amounts of electric flux entering and leaving an enclosed surface respectively are phi1 and phi2 then the electric charge inside the surface will be so first tell me this thing electric field entering the system sorry electric flux entering the system is it considered to be negative or positive electric flux entering the system it is why because i wrote there Ilya, in the reason, negative is correct, Ra. Right? In the reason, you need not think much. Whenever I ask you a question, think in terms of the basic mathematical definition. What is the basic mathematical definition of flux? E A cos theta. So when when will flux be negative? When the value of cos theta is one eighty degrees. So what is the meaning of one eighty? Electric field and aerial vector in opposite direction. So tell me one thing. when i say electric flux is entering the surface what kind of a charge will receive the field lengths negative charge right so for negative charge the electric field is towards the system but the aerial vector is outward so they both are in opposite direction that is why the flux which is entering the surface is always considered to be negative never forget this logic so the electric flux entering the surface is always negative whereas the electric flux leaving the surface is considered to be positive because positive charge has a tendency to release the electric field lines so this and the aerial vector are going to be in the same direction so phi1 and phi2 then the electric charge inside the surface will be so what is gauss law state the net electric flux what is the net electric flux here Ah, uh -huh. what is the net electric flux? Tell me it with the sign convention. Phi two plus negative of phi one makes sense. Is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Epsilon naught will go to the other side, so the right answer will be. Am I clear with this? But as I told you. What is the mistake with the first option? The addition is happening. When can that be the right answer? When they say the flux is getting released, when the flux is coming outward, then option A would have been the right answer. Second one, what is wrong? Phi two minus phi one divided by epsilon naught. Phi two minus phi one divided by epsilon naught. It doesn't make sense at all. Because what is the expression we have seen? We have seen charge enclosed by epsilon naught. We have never seen flux divided by epsilon. So flux should always get multiplied with epsilon naught for you to get the charge. Third one, same mistake as that of second. Fourth one, obviously it is right. Shall I proceed, guys? Yes, sir. So listen. Eight dipoles of charges of magnitude e are placed inside a cube. So there is a cube inside which how many dipoles are placed? Eight dipoles of how much magnitude of charge e. So the total electric flux coming out of the cube uh, cube will be. Why is it zero? So what is the meaning of charges of magnitude e? Then it should have been eighty, no? Eighty by epsilon naught should have been the answer. Yes. When they say charges of magnitude e, positive charge has magnitude e, and negative charge also has magnitude e. That is the meaning. So don't get carried away literally by the statement, thinking that the sum of the charges is. It will never be. So the meaning of it is. That is why if you see dipole moments definition, what did we state? It is a product of magnitude of either of the charges and the distance of separation. so the meaning of eight dipoles of charge of magnitude e means this is e and this is also e so how many ever dipoles you place inside a closed surface will always have the flux to be zero so the answer is zero all these things are given only to confuse you, you know what will happen some of them will start adding these two charges so into two sorry this is two two e 
multiplied with 8, 16 e, so they will think there is the answer. Yeah. That is one common mistake. This, what they will do is e by epsilon naught, they will think that e is the total charge present inside because the e is given here, they will not read it fully e by epsilon naught, other than the case. Fourth, 8 e by epsilon naught, e multiplied with 8. Now, three types of wrong thought process. So you, I, I have seen these kind of mistakes. Okay, that is why I'm telling it. Answer. How to do this? There is a point charge of two micro coulomb, which is placed at the center of a cubic Gaussian surface of nine centimeter on it. What is the net electric flux through the surface? So flux is equal to charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. What is the charge enclosed? 2 into 10 power minus 6 divided by what is the value of epsilon naught? 8.85 into 10 power minus 12. What is the unwanted data? This 9. Right. So 2 divided by 8.85 is going to give you. So you will get 0.226 into 10 power 6. So it will be 2.26 into 10 power 5. I hope this is clear. Those are online. Is it clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. So listen. Okay. So here comes the challenging part. See, this year I don't know how many assertion reason questions are there. Okay. So basically, you have a statement and a reason. What are they saying? There is a point charge which is lying at the center of a cube, okay, of side L. The electric flux emanating from each surface of the cube is 1 by 6 of the total flux. Is that right? See, when I take a cube, right, when I take a cube, irrespective of wherever I place the charge here, they mention it as center. I'm not worried about center. Whenever you apply Gauss law, it is concerned only about one thing. What is it? It can be any position. Okay. Had it been any position, I'll tell you what would have happened is you would have not got the answer as 1 by 6. So answer in this case is coming out to be 1 by 6 because of two reasons. One is cube has six sides. And the second is the charge is exactly placed at the center. If had it been placed closer to one of the sides, then through the other side, it cannot be exactly symmetric. So that is why here, center is also important for you. Right. So the electric flux from the surface is 1 by 6 of the total flux. It makes sense. It's correct. Second one is, according to Gauss theorem, the total electric flux through a closed surface enclosing a charge is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. So reason is it correct or not? That is a so reason that they have given is basically the statement of Gauss law. Is it right? I feel it is right only. Is there any mistake you are able to see? I think it is right, no? But the question is, this is where the challenge starts between option A and B. Both are right ones. See, if either of them is wrong, okay, C and D is happy. A and B is the toughest part. So how will you make the right choice? That's where we need to focus. If you look at the reason, right? What does reason speak about? Reason speaks about Gauss law. What does the subject, what does the statement speak about? It speaks about a cube. Nowhere in the reason they have mentioned about cube. So, you should always concentrate on the subject in the statement. That is the key to solve any assertion reason. So this is the key. That is what you need to look for. You need not complicate anything. Look at the statement. Concentrate on what is the subject. So here, who is the subject? It is cube. It's a particular shape. Here, what is the subject? It's Gauss theorem. It is for any shape. Individually, they both stand to be correct. But the reason is not a supporting statement for you. Hence, option B is correct in this case. It's not A. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? 
So what is that we need to focus on? Can you conclude? I told you now only. You need to focus on the subject in which part? Assertion or reason? Shall I proceed? So, assertion says a charged particle free to move. There is a charged particle which is free to move. Will always move along the electric line of force. Is this statement correct? I have a charged particle which is free to move and there is an electric line of force. Okay, there is an electric line of force. I am saying that the charged particle will always move along the electric line of force. Is it right or is it wrong? Wrong. If it is wrong, why is it wrong? Perfect. That is the answer. So, they told always that always would have been possible only if it is a positively charged. Here, when they say a charged particle, you can take positive or negative. So, for a negative charge, it fails. Right? So, assertion failed, obviously. There is only one option where assertion is wrong. But for the sake of understanding, we'll see the reason also. Okay. The electric lines of force diverge from positive charge, right? And they converge at negative charge. Is it right? That's the answer. So assertion is wrong, but the reason is right. So they obviously have no connection between. So if I have to ask you what is the subject in this question? Charged particle is the subject. So that's why they confused us. So they didn't mention it clearly saying that whether it is a positively charged particle or a negatively charged particle. That clarity is needed. Right? Shall I proceed? So what is quantization of electric charge? What is its cause? So quantization basically states charge is always an integral multiple of the basic property of charge. It can be the charge of an electron or a proton because in terms of magnitude, they both have the same value. So you write mathematically Q is equal to plus or minus N. So positive indicates that the electrons are lost. Negative indicates that the electrons are gained. So what is the cause of it? Cause is obviously transfer of electrons that is taking place from one material to another, right? So the basic cause is that only, sorry, this is one thing. The basic cause is that only integral number of electrons can get transferred from one body to another. And this is applicable for, this also I told, if you remember, it's applicable for microscopic objects. If you check your notes, it will be there.
One minute. So which question were we discussing? This is where we need to start now. Those are online, are you able to see? Yes, sir. Okay, listen. See, there are two point charges, okay, of value four microcoulomb and one microcoulomb, which are separated by distance of two meter in the air. Find the point on the line joining the charges at which the net electric field of the system is zero. So I have discussed similar kind of a problem in the second chapter. In that, what do they ask? If they give you two charges along the line joining the two charges, what do they ask you to calculate? Find the point where the potential is zero. So where will the potential be zero? For that, what are, what are the checkpoints you need to keep in your mind? First thing is the system should be of unlike charges. I told you this, remember, when you talk about the potential of due to a system at a point to be zero, the system should have both the charges to be of opposite nature. If that is missing, you will never get the answer to be zero. Whereas here, this question is related to which value being zero? Electric field being zero, but you look at the nature of the charges that are given. Positive. Is it possible that we can get the answer to be zero? How many of you solved this problem in exam? None of you. You solved. You got the answer. No. Anyone from online, those who solved it in the exam? You solved it. Okay, listen. I can't use. See, listen. There are two point charges, four microcoulomb and one microcoulomb, which are separated by distance of two meter in the air. So I have four here. I have two here, which are separated by distance of two meter. Okay, one. One microcoulomb, which is separated by distance of this much value. Okay. So along the line joining, I can think of three points. If I take this point P, here what will happen is the electric field due to the first positive charge of four microcoulomb will be to the left. Due to the second one also be to the left. So when two vectors are in the same direction, they never get nullified. So this is not possible. Similarly, if I take the point R here, the electric field due to the four microcoulomb is to the right and electric field due to the one is also to the right. So here also not possible. So what are the only place where it is possible? So it is need not be center. It is in between. The answer would have been center had they be, both been of same magnitude. So one is greater, one is smaller. So obviously what will happen is it will be closer to the charge with lesser magnitude. So, if I take the point here to be Q, the electric field due to the 4 is to the right and electric field due to the 1 is to the left. So, when can they both get cancelled out? Only when E1 is equal to E2. Right? So it will be KQ1 divided by, let me take this distance as R. Then how much is this distance going to be? 2 minus R. So KQ1 divided by R square is equal to KQ2 divided by 2 minus R the whole square. Sir. So K and K will get cancelled. Okay. So what is the value of Q1? 4. See, both the sides are microcoulomb. That is why I'm not writing 10 power minus 6. They get cancelled out. So 4 divided by R square is equal to 1 divided by 
two minus r the whole square. So this will give you the answer as four into two minus r the whole square is equal to r square. Makes sense. So this implies four into four plus r square minus four r is equal to r square. So this also implies sixteen plus four r square minus sixteen r is equal to r square. So what will be the answer? Three r square minus sixteen r plus sixteen is equal to zero. So three into sixteen, forty-eight. So what are the factors of forty-eight which will get summed up to minus sixteen? They are obviously twelve and four. Correct? No, twelve four. So this implies three r square minus. Can I write it as twelve r minus four r plus sixteen is equal to zero? So what will you get? Three r into r minus four minus four into r minus four is equal to zero. So three r will be equal to four, or r will be equal to. So I'm directly writing it from here. R will be. See three r minus four is equal to zero. R minus four is equal to zero. R will be four by three or four. So I wrote or, but if you see there is only one point possible. So which point is right? If you take four, you are wrong. Because what is the distance of separation between them? Two. The meaning of four is where did you take R from? You took it from four. You took it from the four microcoulomb. So what is the meaning of this four four meter? It is on the right of both the charges. Right of both the charges possibility is not there, so this is not possible. What is four by three? One point three three. One point three three is between them, so it is less than two. One correction, this will be closer to the one with greater magnitude. That's what is happening, no? One point three three. One point five is exactly center. One point three three is left of center. Left of center is closer to four. So answer will be one point three three from whom? From the four microcoulomb charge. So in this case, wherever you are measuring distance, I think I have already told this to you. What is what are you supposed to report the answer as? Distance of this much value from the reference point. Because if somebody else would have solved this problem, they could have taken one on the left hand side. And four on the right hand side. So from one, if you take the value to be R, you will not get the answer as four by three. How much will you get the answer as? You would have got the answer as two by three. Why two by three? How did I get that? Obvious. What is the distance of separation between them? Two. Two minus four by three is how much? That would have been the answer. Sir, tell me that. Sir, four of two minus r square is equal to r square is done. Now, sir, can we take square root on both sides and? Uh, yeah, you can do that. You can take square root on both sides. If you take square root on both sides, sir, it's not. But if you take, one. if you take square root, you think you get only one answer. You're wrong. If that is your doubt. No, sir. If we take square root, it will come as one meter, not four by three. If you take square root, you got one meter. Huh? Yes, sir. Varadra. Answer. Them. So you took two by two of two minus r is equal to two. Two by r is equal to one by two minus r. Square root of that, then four sir. minus two r is equal to r. Four is equal to three r. R is equal to four by three. That's wrong. Okay, now I'm going to add two of both there. Yes, sir. And one more mistake is, whenever you are taking square root, you should not take only positive value. You should write it as plus or minus. Because if you have x square is equal to y square, x is not equal to y. X is equal to plus or minus y. So when I took plus on both the sides, I got four by three. If you take minus on both the sides. You would have got four as the answer. That should have got eliminated. You need to show that. Basically, this is how quadratic equations are formed. They both are same. 
புரியுது ஜஸ்ட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் வேஸ் ஆஃப் சால்விங் அவ்வளோ ஷெல் ஐ ப்ரொசீட் டெக்ஸ்ட் புக் ப்ராப்ளம் ஹவு டு சால்வ் திஸ் given a uniform electric field e of 5 into 10 power 3 i cap newton per coulomb find the flux of this field through a square of 10 cm on a side whose plane is parallel to the yz plane so when a plane is parallel to yz plane listen to this carefully and tell me the answer when you see this word plane is parallel to yz plane what is the direction of aerial vector x axis so in this case if i put a question saying whether it is positive x axis or negative x axis what will you say it can be in either of the directions because it is a square but since they gave the electric field to be in the positive direction it is advisable you take the aerial vector also in the positive direction so what is going to be the flux in this case so flux will be equal to e vector into a vector into cos theta e o lo 5 into 10 power 3 what is a 10 into 10 power minus 2 the whole square into cos of how much value 0 so how much will you get the answer as when you solve this you will get the answer as 50 newton meter square per coulomb square okay or you will get the answer as 50 volt meter both are right sorry not coulomb square newton meter square per coulomb we will get newton meter square per coulomb or 50 volt meter so this is the flux in the first case second one so how did you guys first of all tell me that it is in the x direction so if you take x y z what is missing x is missing so that will be the direction of aerial wave because all the three are perpendicular to each other so what is the answer for the second one what would be the flux through the same square if the plane makes an angle of 30 degree with the x axis see initially the plane was like this now if the plane makes an angle of 30 degree with the x axis this angle is 30 then what is the direction of aerial vector so it makes an angle of it makes an angle of 60 had you taken the answer as 30 and solved it you would have got the wrong answer paniya da so when the plane so that is why i'm stressing on this point again and again whenever you are asked to solve a problem based on electric flux for that matter any flux you should always take the angle between electric field and aerial vector aerial vector is always perpendicular to the surface so whenever in a question they mention the angle made with the plane plane makes an angle 30 degree abina aerial vector will be the complementary of it 60 so this is the keyword okay so if this is the case then aerial vector will be complementary of this angle so if you have missed it please make a note of this next time onwards be careful so it will be the complementary Uh, how much will be the answer it will be cos of 60 so what is cos 60 so flux in the second case will be ea into cos 60 basically what you got here is ea only because cos 0 is 1 so 50 50 multiplied with what is the value of cos 60 half answer will be 25 newton meter square per coulomb that is the answer is it simple clear with this ma sanjay clear ha huh? adav you're writing shall i proceed Thirteen. a conducting sphere of radius 10 cm has an unknown charge if the electric field due to the system at 20 cm from the center of the sphere is 1.5 into 10 power 3 newton per coulomb and it is pointing radially inward so when you see this word radially inward what comes to your mind negative 
this it's negative charge but here the question is what is the net charge on the sphere that's all you need to find so basically what is the electric field due to a conducting sphere at a distance r from it q divided by 4 pi epsilon not r square is equal to the electric field so what is the value of q that's what we need to find so 1 by 4 pi epsilon not is 9 into 10 power 9 Into Q divided by what is the value of R? I need to take. This is where I need to be careful. One is ten centimeter, other is twenty. Which one should I take? Should I take ten or twenty? Did you take ten there? Other than that, you should not take that because they told at a distance smaller. Capital R is ten. So in this question, I had they asked it what the electric field due to the system on the surface in Kurtala. You should have taken a test. Okay, so divided by R square, it is twenty into ten power minus two the whole square is equal to what is the value of electric field one point five one point five three by two into ten power three. So this will cancel this three times. So twenty square is going to be four hundred four hundred into ten power minus four. Am I clear with this, guys? So capital Q will be equal to. Four hundred into ten power minus four into ten power three divided by two into three into ten power nine. Is it clear? So this and this will get cancelled. It will be two hundred. Uh, so two hundred into ten power. See, this is ten power minus one. This will go to the numerator. It will become ten power minus ten. What is two hundred by three? It is sixty-six point seven. So, sixty-six point seven into ten power minus ten coulomb is also going to be equal to six point six seven into ten power minus nine coulomb, and ten power minus nine coulomb is also called as nano coulomb. That is answer. Is that clear? Guys, are am I clear with this? Yes. Shall I proceed? So the answer is there. Look, six point six seven. They have added that minus sign. Minus sign indicates it's a negative charge. Shall I proceed? Yes. Listen. Using Gauss law, obtain the expressions for the electric field due to uniformly charged spherical shell of radius capital R at a at a point outside the shell. So basically, this question is the the result you obtain in this question is the formula for previous question. Okay, this is a derivation. I am not explaining it because I have already done it. You would have remembered, right? Electric field is we calculated for three point one will be zero. Second will be it will be Q divided by Four pi epsilon naught capital R square, and the third it will be Q divided by four pi epsilon naught small r square. Huh? Outside is enough, but I'm just giving you the outline. So R is less than capital R. There you lost marks, sir. Okay, okay. So this is for R is equal to R. This is for R greater than R. And what else is possible to be asked? The graph between electric field and distance. You will get a graph like this. Basically, you will get dotted lines. I'm sorry. Here you will get dotted lines. If you remember, remember, come. See, everything is there in the solution. Look, this one. You remember this graph? So this is not there in textbook, but I have explained it. I remember teaching this to you. Okay. Next, the fifteenth one is define that you want to copy here. Okay. So define the term electric dipole moment. The basically the product of magnitude of either of the charges multiplied with the Distance of separation between them. Is it a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? It's a vector quantity. Let me use the expression for the electric field at a point on the equatorial plane. 
of an electric dipole of length 2a so you need to be very careful okay suppose the same question they are asking if your equatorial plane of electric dipole of length a means you don't take 2a and then start solving it you need to take it as a by a and then start solving it 99.9% they will not ask like that but i am worried if they ask like that be careful okay so what will be the answer kp divided by it will be kp divided by r cube whether it is going to be a 2a or whatever it is the result will be the same but your process of derivation will be this also i am not explaining because we have done it this is also a derivation so torque is equal to p vector cross p e vector this also you know you take the uniform electric field positive charge negative charge this will be like this you will have qe in this way negative qe in this way that's what p vector cross e vector or p is sin theta and i have also given you the logic of why you should write only p cross a and not e cross b also if you recollect that. that water bottle example that with water bottle we did one that so that's a concept based on this there's also an ncrt problem so an electric field is uniform okay and in the positive x direction it, and it is in the positive x direction for positive x and uniform with the same magnitude but in the negative x direction for negative x it is given as e vector is equal to 200 i cap okay where are we ah uh, e vector is equal to 200 i cap newton per coulomb for x greater than 0 minus 200 i cap for x less than 0 correct ah uh? there is a right circular cylinder of length 20 cm and radius of 5 cm which has its center at the origin and its axis along the x axis so that one face is at x is equal to plus 10 and the other is at x is equal to minus 10 what are the net outward flux through each flat face so if i take this to be the flat face what is the flux through the first face if i take this to be 1 and this to be 2 and the curved surface to be 3 what is the flux through the first face it will be ea cos see electric field is to the right aerial vector is also to the right ea cos correct so what is e 200 and what is a pi r square basically so pi into r is 5 cm so it is going to be pi into 25 into 10 power minus 4 so 25 into 200 is 5000 5000 into 10 power minus 4 is 5 into 10 power minus 1 so you will get the answer as 5 pi into 10 power minus 1 newton meter square per coulomb and same is going to be the case for the flux through the second surface also am i right so this is the answer for the first part of the question but if you observe no they didn't ask us what is the flux through each face what is the net outward flux through the surface means you need to add them so net outward flux will be equal to 10 pi into 10 power minus 1 newton meter square per coulomb so it is going to be pi newton meter square per coulomb this is what you need to report am i cleared yes so what is the flux through the side of the cylinder simple again zero because the diagram itself is telling you electric field and aerial vector are perpendicular to each other so here the answer is zero what are the net outward flux through the cylinder actually the first part itself will help you to solve the remaining the net outward flux is going to be pi plus zero answer is pi only pi newton meter square per coulomb what is the net charge inside the cylinder what is the net charge inside the cylinder so basically you got pi no pi multiplied with epsilon not 
volume. Total flux multiplied with the epsilon naught value. Here, guys. Yeah. Shall I proceed? Listen to this. State the principle of superposition and uh, use it to obtain the expression for the total electric force exerted at a point charge due to the assembly of n discrete point charges. This you know. Right. So, three charges 10 microcoulomb, 5 microcoulomb, and minus 5 microcoulomb are placed in air at the three corners ABC of an equilateral triangle of side 0.1 meter. How is the diagram going to look like? This is 10, 5, and minus 5. These three are placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle. Find the resultant force experienced by the charge at the corner K. Corner K contains 10 microvolume. So, what is going to be the answer? If you see, due to this 5 coulomb, it will experience a force F1 in this direction. Due to this minus 5, it experiences a force F2 in this direction. So, what is going to be the value of F1 and F2 in terms of magnitude? F1 and F2 in magnitude will be the same. Why? Because when you, when you apply Coulomb's law, what are the two important factors on which force depends on? The charges which are part of the magnitude of charges participating, distance of separation between them. So, what is the magnitude of charges? 10 and 5, 10 and 5. What is the distance between them? Same. So, mag mathematically, F1 and F2 will have the same value, which will be equal to F. So, from this, what is the important conclusion you can draw? Force is going, the resultant force is going to be an angular bisector of both. Correct? You remember this point when two vectors are of two vectors of equal magnitude are inclined at an angle, then the resultant will always be an angular bisect. Okay. But what we will do here is, see, you can either resolve it into components and then solve, or uh, you can also apply parallelogram law like this. I'll apply parallelogram law. So it is going to be root of f square plus f square plus 2f square, that is basically a square plus b square plus 2ab cos of the angle between them. So, what is the angle between f1 and f2? 120, yeah? cos 120. What is cos 120? Minus half. So, cos 120 will cancel this 2 minus 1 times. So, you will have a minus here. This plus will go and you will have a minus. So, this f square and f square will get cancelled. What is that you are left out with? That is the answer. So, if you calculate the force, you can just report that answer. That is the answer. Are you able to understand? I am not sure how you guys have solved it, but you can follow this method. First, solve and then substitute the values. Solve in the sense, first, try to derive an equation for that in terms of general values. I think last problem, no? one last problem is. Was this paper tough? Now you feel it is easy, no? Other so the second chapter would have prepared and come, maybe something similar. You want time to prepare, huh? this week you can't write. We'll have it on. PS2 Finish the house. I you like it. I don't even know what is the story. You guys watch movies, other? 
I watch a lot. That's why I'm asking. <clears throat> but not this year, at least. Okay. You can watch, but reduce it. So Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion acting between two stationary point charges given by this value. You want all these notations, right? F one two and F two one. So the whole story is known to you. I'll directly go to the question. In Coulomb's law, F is given as k q one q two r divided by r square. Then what are the factors on which the constant of proportionality k depends on? First one, electrostatic force. It depends on the electrostatic force acting between the two charges. So one thing what we will do is we'll write k is equal to f into r square divided by q one q two. Right. This is the first step we'll do. So what is it stating? K depends on the electrostatic force acting between the two charges. So what is the answer? Yes or no? This is wrong. Why? Because what is the name? K is introduced as a proportionality constant. It has to be a constant except with other factors. Force depends on the proportionality constant. The proportionality constant doesn't depend on the force. So it depends on the nature of the medium because K is, you should not write this mathematical equation. Rather, you should write K is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. This is the actual expression you're supposed to write. So what does it tell? It depends on the nature of the medium. So this is the right answer. Everything else is only to confuse you. Because if you write it like this, you will say it depends on the magnitude of charges. No. Depends on the distance of separation. No. Because this is the expression. Had it depended on all those values, you can never write the value of k as 9 into 10 power 9. You would have, you would have changed it from problem to problem. So dimensional formula for the permittivity constant. m minus 1, l minus 3, t power 4, a minus 2. So actually, C is the right answer. But for this one alone, there is a mistake in the answer key. It is given as A. That is wrong. OK. If at all anybody has written C, but you have lost marks, let me know. Done with this? So third question. The force of repulsion between two charges of 1 microcoulomb each kept 1 meter apart in the vacuum is obviously 9 into 10 power 9. F is equal to k, q1, q2 divided by r square. q1 and q2 are 1, but r is also 1. Everything is in SI unit. So 9 into 10 power 9, new. Fourth one, two identical charges repel each other with the force of 10. Observe this, it is milligram weight. When they are 0.6 meter apart in which medium in the air medium, the value of each force, uh, sorry, the value of each charge is how much. So we know that F is equal to K Q1 Q2. So K is 9 into 10 power 9 into Q square because they both are identical charges divided by R square, which is 0 0.6. It's a 6 into 10 power minus 1. 6 square is 36, 10 power minus 1, the whole square is 10 power minus 2. So this and this will get cancelled. What is the value of F? 10, no. So you will write this as 10 into milli is 10 power minus 3 into gram weight. Whenever you have gram weight, right, to convert it to Newton, you need to multiply it with 10. Gram weight to be converted to Newton should always be multiplied with 10. So what are you going to get the answer as? You will get it as 10 power minus 1. So Q square is equal to 4 into 10 power minus 2 into 10 power minus 1, the whole divided by 10 power 9. Did you understand what I did? 4 into 10 power minus 2 to the other side, 10 power 9 to the denominator. So when this is the case, you will get the answer as 4 into 10 power minus 12. Q square is 4 into 10 power minus 12. So what will be the value of Q? 2 into 10 power minus 6 coulomb. 10 power minus 6 coulomb is micro coulomb. So this will be the answer. The answer will be 2 micro coulomb. Got it?
So I'll solve the next one, then you can copy it. Coulomb's law for the force between electric charges most closely resembles with. It's simple. So basically, for this, you need to attend any four. You should not attempt. So if at all you have left fifth one also, the sixth, sorry, fourth also, fifth is easy. So third is easy, fifth is easy, second is easy, and first is also easy. Only this one is a problem. Clear with this? We'll wind up with this. Okay, did you all copy it? Yes, sir. Ah. So we'll wind up with this. Tomorrow we'll solve problems based on electrostatic potential and capacitance. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay.